Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rob Miller with FlowServe Corporation. Um, I'm kind of going to build a little bit on what David started with this, uh, this afternoon and talking more on what I like to call advanced machine learning. Um, because really the capabilities that have been developed in the last five years, in particular in the data science capabilities and the combination with computing power has, at least for what we've looked at, really enabled a commercial offering with machine learning that we didn't really see as viable in the previous 10, 20 years. And we've looked at this, you know, with our engineering over those 20 years. We've dealt with neural networks. We've been building our own custom algorithms. Uh, we worked with some things that came out of the government, some think tank work that they did and became commercial offerings. Uh, but it was costly, took a lot of time to develop. Uh, we had a hard time commercializing it. I think with what you've seen in the last five years come together, uh, that has changed rapidly. Uh, and you're gonna see a lot of that in the presentation is kind of the theme of, of what we have here. Uh, a little bit on FlowServe, uh, if you don't know the company. We're one of the world's leading flow control providers. Uh, we pr predominantly make big metal stuff, as we like to say. Uh, pumps, valves, mechanical seals. Uh, we're about four and a half billion dollars, uh, very global, more than 17,000 employees, uh, 71 factories located around the world, uh, more than 200 service centers. These are our local quick response uh, centers that we put very close to our customers uh, in countries all around the world. And we predominantly serve the oil and gas, chemical and, and power industries. Uh, as I said, we like to make big metal stuff. A lot of metal bashing kind of thing is our background, right? Bigger pumps, if it's on the Alaska pipeline, if it's in a nuclear plant in China, a refinery in Singapore, that's the kind of stuff we, we typically like. Uh, my group in Global Solutions basically runs all the services for our business. And these are our more technical field services, our engineering services, uh, and in particular asset performance services. It's kind of in that field with asset performance that our industrial internet and our monitoring and more advanced diagnostic uh, products and technologies come into play. Um, in this area, we've been working probably more in the last five to 10 years in, in developing capabilities. We have a lot of pretty straightforward data acquisition capabilities to quickly economically add data acquisition to pumps, rotating equipment in the field, using wireless technology to bring that up to uh, either the plant level or the cloud level, uh, and start to go to more active type monitoring with equipment. But some of the challenges that we, we got into uh, was our typical monitoring was threshold-based alarms. So we're monitoring things like vibration, pressure, temperature. Uh, we set some nice thresholds on charts uh, and we can alarm off of that. We can provide notifications to our customers uh, when things start to go out of limit. The question we almost always get is more around, do I have enough time to respond effectively to what you're providing me with those kind of threshold alarms? So typically where we might be able to provide notice in a matter of hours, they're looking for weeks, days, you know, in advance to have that kind of uh, failure protection on the front end. So that, that was a big challenge that uh, we're looking to address through machine learning. The other side was where most of our algorithms today are uh, custom engineered, meaning we do them ourselves. We start from failure modes uh, and work our way up to provide our own uh, custom engineered algorithms. This process typically takes us one to two years for a particular pump type. Uh, we currently have over 140 different pump types in the company. So uh, I'm going to hopefully develop more of these before I retire. Uh, and that was the other need we had to look at some more advanced type of machine learning capability in this space. So where are we going? More into automated pump failure prediction capabilities. Really trying to answer these type of questions that you see up here, where we're addressing uh, what kind of a problem the pump's having, how it's operating, is it operating in the right state? Uh, not only at the pump unit level, 
but maybe even at the fleet level in terms of groups of pumps all across our customers' plants and locations. Certainly the predictive capability in identifying uh, potential failure modes uh, and preventing unplanned failures is a key activity. I think you heard it today in the, the conference this morning uh, where the ExxonMobil guys were talking about reliability and uh, preventing unplanned uh, production issues. That's core to what we see across all our customers and probably the biggest value proposition we have in the near term. There are some other areas that get into security and what, uh, what we can predict and, and show around security related events as well. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But in the most basic kind of a view of what we're talking about in early warning uh, and, and eliminating uh, unplanned failures, it's a simple view of creating a dynamic model from the pumps and what we have running in the field. And from a point of failure that we typically have today, I might be able to give a customer anywhere from a few hours to a day's notice typically with what I have in hard-based thresholds alarms. What we're doing with multi-dimensional analysis, really building a, a digital model of the pumps and providing more uh, advanced machine learning capability around that, is moving that window back to where we've got a lot more advanced warning uh, in a case like this, maybe five days before the failure. That would not be detectable with normal human kind of interaction uh, and threshold-based alarms. So that, that's kind of what we've put into practice in an actual case. This was with our, uh, one of our larger uh, petrochemical customers. We're monitoring about 500 pumps in the field. These are kind of actively monitored where data is coming in every five minutes across all these pumps. And we looked at what we could do in recognizing operating states, detecting uh, anomalies, and, and ultimately predicting pump failure for, for this customer. And uh, we used three years worth of data that we had. We had been at site for a while, so we were churning through the data. The key thing in terms of starting that was very different was we did not do any pre-work around the data, building models, or trying to educate it. We turned it over to our technology partner, which is uh, Spark Cognition, who's here. And the target was 30 days to come up with that predictive model. So this was not a process where we're spending, you know, six or 12 months trying to build a model and tune it, uh, but basically did it in 30 days. And as far as results, uh, it was very successful in identifying the core operating modes of these pumps. Uh, we had about four different main failure modes we were looking to detect. Uh, we could detect with greater than 99% accuracy uh, around those failure modes. And the key thing, we're talking about failure prevention, oops, sorry, was here where we had several cases of failures in that data that we were able to use to, to analyze where we had only had about 12 hours of notice for our customers. And we took that to about five to six days using the advanced machine learning capability. This was really key to answering questions about reacting. Uh, especially in this case, they use operators, typically get our notifications. And uh, the big question when you had only a few hours was, can we get the operator out to take a look at the piece of equipment, actually decide what's happening, have maintenance and reliability engaged, and actually do anything different than they would have normally done in letting it run to failure. Uh, so going to this type of capability where we're now giving five or six days in an advance notice has completely changed the game in terms of what we can do from the, the maintenance and reliability standpoint uh, and the value we can provide to our customer. So essentially this is leveraging uh, machine learning technology to try to make a step change from where we've been. Uh, we've been operating with many of our customers as an asset reliability partner for the last 10 years or so and it's gotten us from this space down here in 30 months, mean time between failure up to the 60 months, 
but really they were challenging us with the question of what's next and what can you bring to us next. We think machine learning is part of that answer and really helping to drive a step change where we can get up into this area with a lot of the leading edge customers uh, out there, especially in the process industries that, that we work with. Uh, there's tremendous value to getting to that next level. It's been very incremental, I would say, over the last 10 years in what we've been able to do. So uh, this is really a, a new area that we think uh, can add a lot of value to what we're doing with customers and performance around our equipment. So back to why machine learning or advanced machine learning, and again, I think it comes back to this evolution in the last five years of the data science and what's been happening with computing power. In particular, in this area in data science with cognitive analytics, where you've got um, essentially cognitive analytics with uh, trying to teach a machine how to have human-like analysis behavior. So as humans, we're very good in recognizing natural languages, correlations, patterns, those kind of things. You've got the machine side of being very good with data, right? Large volumes of data. So now, as we've got the advanced in, in uh, data science, uh, artificial intelligence, and the computing power kind of all coming together, you're getting these commercialized algorithms that are coming out that are really allowing the human-like analysis, but at machine speed. And essentially, our partner, Spark Cognition, uh, does exactly that. Uh, and they have a commercial offering that's you know, available today that companies are leveraging across different industries. Uh, if, you know, we work with them here uh, in our flow control space. I think you'll hear tomorrow the IBM CTO is here, and uh, we'll speak probably about Watson. Uh, Spark Cognition is also a partner behind the Watson Group and uh, works a lot in the space in the question and answer side with Watson. Uh, so th this is uh, kind of the change that we've seen taking place in the last five years. And in particular, some benefits, I would say, around this change that are, are really key to where, what we've seen versus years past. I would say some areas like scalability uh, in automated model building, this is really a, a key area for us with lots of different types of equipment, was not having to spend a lot of time custom developing a model, training it for months at a time. You know, our target and what we did was in 30 days. Uh, completely different type of capability to be able to scale this uh, and work across all the different types of equipment we're looking to do. At the same time, adaptability is another key thing. I think in the past we saw a lot where the models, if you had a very stagnant type of uh, operating condition that stayed the same, this equipment runs at 3,500 RPM, conditions don't change that much, the technology's worked very good. If you get something that has a lot of variation to it, a lot of process-related changes or other variables, the modeling had a hard time adapting to that. Uh, the new types of capabilities are learning on the fly. They adapt more with multi-changes and variables and are much more sophisticated in being able to handle that type of uh, multi-input uh, environment. It also leads to higher accuracy in terms of the modeling and detecting different anomalies and what you get out of that. Another nice factor is that you can add in the external side. So if we have a pump in Saudi Arabia that's at sea level at 120F, we can input that weather condition versus one that's in the Rocky Mountains at 5,400 feet and uh, at 30 degrees F. So those kind of external factors can also be added into the model, which continue to refine and, and improve what you're doing. Um, at the last part, there's also some contextual uh, application for this. This is more the question and answer side and how well systems can quickly respond. This is kind of the IBM Watson use case in the question and answer. This is why uh, you know, Watson can win Jeopardy. It's not only it knows the answer, but how fast it knows the answer. Uh, at the same time, there's some nice security enhancements that can go with this and what you can do in learning um, 
security patterns around what's normal, what's outside the normal range around your equipment or assets, and, and different types of security things you might have, not, not only at a secure, uh, network level, but at an asset level. So it's kind of this perfect storm of everything that's come together with data science, computing power, that's really allowing us to start to move our asset monitoring and our capabilities to the next level. Really having more actionable insights is kind of the key thing with our customers, giving more advance notice and how quickly they can respond uh, and really prevent failures from happening. And you know, scaling that out in terms of enterprise-wide and fleet-wide type performance is really capable now with the technologies and what we're seeing. Uh, our partner, Spark Cognition, uh, is working with us across these different areas and uh, also into the, the security side of things. And uh, if you get any more questions that dive deeper into data science, I'll turn it over to Usman. And uh, if you want to talk about deep neural networks or those kind of exciting things, he'll be on our panel here. Any questions or anything that come up outside the panel, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email. Be glad to uh, provide you some more information. Thanks a lot.